Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics and Living, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today I'm going to talk about uh, our pastors and how we need to give our pastors a break. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomen Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Secuturam Principio et Nucet Semper et in Seculi Seculorum. Amen. I think the theme of this episode is very similar to the, the theme, the episode that I did on recently on Pope Francis that maybe came out a month ago. Uh, because I think being a pastor, like similar to being a pope, I think is an exceedingly difficult job. And I think we can play armchair quarterback all the time and be like, if I was the pope, I would do this. Or if I was the president, I would do this. It'd be so easy. And if I was the pastor, I can't believe he can't see that. This is a problem. And I would say, look, I've never been a pastor. I've never been a CEO or anything like that. But I do sympathize with pastors. Now, some of you who are more of, of, the, of the mad rat tribe, you'd be like, don't you dare sympathize with the Novus Ordo pastors who are destroying the, the, the mass and who have 30-minute confession times a week and they do their masters of ceremony jokes during the, the service and they do all these liturgical abuses. How dare you? And I go, well, look, hating somebody, first of all, hating somebody, especially in the form of wrath, is a sin. Hating somebody is kind of a useless emotion. It's a poison that, that we concoct that only we drink. And I think, for, and it's also not Christ-like. I think hating somebody uh, is, is, is not the best route to go. I think having sympathy for somebody is the better route and praying for them. We pray for the Pope, we pray for, for you, you pray for me, we pray for pastors. Pastors have to be a jack of all trade. And remember, we are not Protestants, where in the Protestant world, who opens a church? Normally, it's a guy who's really good at what Catholics would say, homiletics, really good at, at sermons. And they're like, well, you need to start a church, right? And they can have skills, like they can have a master's in business or in marketing, and they can have these skills they bring to the table. In the Catholic world, it's a vocation, really. It's, it's like Samuel, young Samuel. You get this calling to, to be a priest, and the priest has to wear many, many, many hats. He's got to be the, the cheap shepherd. He's got to be good in the confessional, so to speak, good in the confessional. He has to be good with finances and budgeting. He's got to be really good at uh, dealing with conflict and stress. Because you think about it, like, everyone comes to you all the time as a pastor. Everyone's coming to you either for one of two things. They want something from you or they're going to complain about something. It, it, it must be exhausting, right? It must be exhausting that it, it's almost like Hollywood celebrities who then get all these women thrown at them and they're always wondering, it's like, do these people even like me for who I am or is it just because of the money I have and the fame I'm going to bring them? And I think with priests, if you're always being asked, oh, Father, can you, can you do this last second confession? Oh, Father, can you give me advice on what to do here? Oh, Father, can you promote this? Oh, Father, can you do this? Can you do that? This? And you, just, you could see why they just want to lock themselves up in a rectory. Or the other one is, Father, how dare you do this? You know, it could be something relatively big or something like really small. And lots of times when people come to a priest and criticize the priest, they don't do it in charity, right? They're all mad and angry, you know, and they, and they come to them and half the time they're criticizing them on something that maybe is in the germ, in the general structure of the Roman Missal, but the person who's ignorant, not stupid, remember ignorance is lack of knowledge, is ignorant on it, doesn't know. So the priest is like in this situation is like, well, you know, actually this is what I'm supposed to do. And doesn't want to make the, 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 the parishioner feel bad. And lots of times, as a CEO, which a pastor is, he has to make tough decisions that's going to alienate somebody. Somebody's always going to be alienated, whether or not they take away an axe retreat, or they add this, or they, they take away the Christmas, they move the crutch uh, during Christmas to another side, or they move the choir to the choir loft, or... They, they expand the school or they, they, they limit the enrollment of the school. You know, whatever it is, we're going to pave the, the parking lot. That's going to alienate people because now they're going to have to park far away. It's like there's always going to be somebody who is hurt or alienated by this. And I would tell you, look, being a priest is a vocation. Doesn't mean that they're going to be amazingly good at homiletics. Doesn't going to mean they're going to be amazingly good at budget and financing and conflict resolution and all these things. And lots of times, priests will be very good at one thing and suck at the other thing. So you might have, and, and I would say in general, priests as a whole, probably not the best in homilies, 
So you might have a guy who's really good with the budget and the financing and the boring stuff behind the scenes, but he's dreadfully bad in homiletics. And so people aren't paying attention. He's not really doing a good job catechetically and teaching apologetics from the ball pit. And people are like, I don't like this priest, he's boring or whatever. But behind the scenes, he's keeping the, the parish in the black. He's doing all these great things. Or it could be the other way around where you know, some would say, and we have an episode on Bishop Strickland, what happened in Tyler is like, well, he's this great vocal component uh, of traditional Catholicism, but behind the scenes, um, he was not that great on the things that we would consider to be boring. So I'd say, look, have compassion for pastors. Are there evil pastors out there? Not evil, but like change agent modernist pastors who know what the teaching of the church is, the magisterial teaching, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna change the words of consecration, or I'm gonna change the words in the confessional, or, you know, I know better, right? It's the sin of pride, right? It's the sin of the, of the devil. I know better. The church teaches this. I don't care. Are there those types of priests? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would tell you the majority of priests, for you Protestants, especially when you post the comments, the majority, majority of priests are not pedophiles. If you look at the statistics, there's a much higher rate of pedophilia in public schools and daycares and all this, but we've talked about it in the past. But the majority of pastors out there are trying to do the best they can with the skills that they have, and they're limited in a lot of ways by the parish council, by their own uh, maybe limited skills in certain areas, and it, it can be a tough job. And so I would tell you, have compassion for them the same way you would want people to have compassion for you when you're having struggles. Love your neighbor as yourself. And when you see your pastor, instead of doing the one of two things that typically they're, they're approached on, which is, I need something from you or I'm going to criticize you, maybe just go up to them and say, I appreciate you being a priest or I appreciate you being a pastor. I'm sure it's a difficult job and just know that I appreciate what you do. And I'm telling you, it's like, I know teachers in my life, it's the same thing. Teachers are always either criticized or they're, uh, you know, the, the, the students, why don't you curve my grade 60 points for this quiz? And they just love to hear at the end of the school year, some student come to them and say, thank you for being my teacher. Because it's like the, the parable of the 10 lepers in Luke, right? He, he cures 10 lepers, and only one comes back with gratitude. So I would just tell you, have gratitude, have compassion, have understanding that the job is tough. And you'll never know how tough that job is because you're not a priest and you're not a pastor. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.